emotional control, self-compassion, spirituality, and true animal nature are only some of the topics discussed in this, this week's live link, Deep Dive, but it's also gonna be discussed today. Uh, the challenges we are presented with by the words are only intensifying. Stay the course, fellow humans. Together, we are always stronger and better off than alone. Obviously, this was written on a Sunday because it, and let me ask you this question, David. Um, what I just read, does that replace the old Sunday read? In a way, it does, yeah. I mean, things evolve and it's kind of um, inadvertent. And it wasn't intended to. It was supposed to be. But a sometimes, sum up of it. sometimes things happen in life that aren't intended to be, and we just have to figure out if they work into the into the. That's right. The yes, exactly, exactly. So basically, that's what's happened. It's five links deep every Sunday. It comes out, you know, through my Twitter newsletter, and it has which, five... uh, which will be a good segue to back to direct, directly quoting you. Okay. Control your life manage yes. your emotions, change your future, being intentional in our business, our decisions and our relationship is not easy. There is a line, a fine balance in trusting, oh, another favorite David Amerlin word, your own judgment and second guessing yourself to the point that you can't get anything done because you suspect the motivation of your own action. And I will tell who is ever watching this that I am, we are so fortunate to, to be having a discussion today with David, the super hero. <laughs> I so wish I really do sometimes. <laughs> David, the superhero. And I should also point out that um, in the last seven years, uh, I have been referenced as David number two, with David number one being our guest today, my guest today, my friend today, my friend every day, because it's intended to be. Absolutely, and I agree. I mean, I know, I know these connections appear to be, you know, business-like and professional, but at the end of the day, you know, if if I don't find a lot of synergy in the values you project, in the way you think, in the things which you do in the world, I, I would be unwilling to, to, to be here. Okay, so my first question of all the things that jumped out at me as I started to read your book, what jumped out at me, actually the very first, it really- Yeah, yeah know, totally, I'm dying to you'll hear never get, You will never guess what it is. You will Go never ahead. guess what it is, but you made reference to your mother and father and that jumped off the page to me. And I said, I've never heard David reference his mother and father before. How? how very interesting that it, it's happening uh, in, in this book. The other thing that I noticed very quickly that it brought a big smile to my face uh, was that in your acknowledgments, and I even read your acknowledgments, I saw the name Zara Altair. Well, I had read that 24 hours before I was doing a one hour recording with Zara. And huh. I, I congratulated her I said, you being acknowledged in David Amelin's book. And you know what her response was? Her, her response was, I didn't even, I haven't gotten my copy of the book yet. I don't know. And so I was giving her some new information. How, how neat was that, that I was well, sharing yeah, some, yeah. some information yeah. with her? Uh, David, uh, your last three books, uh, well, uh, help me out here. Did I, <laughs> you and I have discussed a lot of books. Um, Actually, yes. <laughs> uh, we've discussed and, and, and we've gone through a lot of different things. And I will have to say in, in all honesty that since 2000, uh, well, the last seven, eight years, I have read more David Amaral than, than anything that, that I've ever read, you know, by one author. So it, it's been a wonderful a compliment and thank you for that. It's that been really a wonderful appreciate. journey for me, obviously, because I'm still here, still here doing it. And uh, uh, you, uh, I was just thinking about, you know, was there any way as you started to do your research, uh, 
well, for an intentional and a sniper mind. Okay. And you dealt, you actually dealt with that. I was kind of surprised you dealt with that in this book. You have a page praise for the sniper mind. I would, I was wondering, did they start out in, in, in the eye of your mind at the same time? And well, kind of one led into another. So, I mean, the sniper mind was a standalone book, but there was a lot of research, which I came across a lot more than I actually anticipated. And as I finished that book, there was a lot of research, which I hadn't addressed that I hadn't covered or hadn't used and some avenues I hadn't explored in the ways that we can actually take some of the lessons of the sniper mind which is more business focused and apply them to us individually because at the end of the day if we're the foundation of everything we do we're the foundation of everything that happens if we're not okay then whatever we do whatever happens whatever outcomes we actually generate are not going to be okay so I wanted to take that research, modulate it, put it into manageable chunks and say, hey, you know, we all struggle with these things. We all struggle with motivation. We struggle with self-knowledge, self-discovery. We struggle with our ability to manage our emotions. We struggle with the ability to organize our thoughts. We all want to be happy. And these are all things addressed in the book itself. And I wanted to sort of say, okay, if we all struggle with these things, where do they come from? How are they generated? What does science tell us about them and about us? And if we understand something about them and us, then can we not work a little bit smarter, manage things a little bit better, and attain the things which we need in a slightly easier way? I just I just started to put the book side by side because to me, there, there seem to be some, some similarities, some similar thinking, some foundational work. Uh, when you and I discussed the sniper mind, the absolute first thing that came to my mind was, is, and we talked about it, is the sniper mind pretty much the same as the entrepreneurial mindset? And, and, and we agreed that, that it was. And I was then wondering, as I, I've read this, because I, I, you, you can't believe what is going through me as I, I'm reading things, I'm saying, Who's saying that? Is David saying that? Or is David number one saying that? Or is David number two saying that? I mean, it's, there's- That's that, brilliant. I think that's really cool. It Thank is you. so wonderful. And, and it's a great place for, for me to be in life, to be able to you know, go back and, and, and uh, because you have gone through a lot of, in my mind, uh, you've gone through different phases and, and, and it is what it is. It's you, it's, it's where your head is at that particular point in time, what it is that you want to focus. But the thing that that I've enjoyed, I, I think most, when 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 you get thoughts, you want to put a quill in in on paper to to tell them, or you probably do more keyboarding than you do with a quill pen. But um, same thing. But <laughs> you, you say it's paper. You 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 have, you want to tell the, you want to tell a story through your words, and nobody does it better. Nobody does it better than you do. Well. I love to tell stories, as you well know, but I like to do videos with them. I, 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 I did my thing with the book. It was the most exciting thing. I spent 100 days writing a book. Well, I've told you this story. Yes, and, yeah, yeah. and I think and, it's an amazing journey, right? Well, yeah, amazing because you know how, how much time you spend uh, in, in your research. And uh, I, I started to say I was kind of curious um, as I put the book side by side, were there shared bibliographies uh, between the two books where, where you were using the source, again, because it gave me I, some, um, to think about. some Some bibliography was shared, but some studies used in the first book, in mean, the Sniper Mind, were then used as a springboard to take me further. And, it, and it's telling that although Intentional is almost half the size of Sniper Mind, the amount of research that has gone into both books is about the same. And it took about the same length of time for me to research them and write them. So there's a lot of condensation that goes on into um, intentional by, by design. You know, I decided that you know each chapter had to work or, or it hadn't, it couldn't. So if it didn't, then it didn't matter how long the chapter was. Well, and, 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 you're, and you're doing things differently today than you did when I first met you. And, you know, we grow mm. and we, we, we evolve. Absolutely. We evolve, we evolve yeah. and we do what yeah. we, what we think is the best to do. Um, yeah. And, 
but I've noticed you've done a really wonderful thing. Uh, and we've talked a little bit about it on, on, on LinkedIn with your very short five minute, six minute messages. Uh, and you're now telling this story in, in those messages. That's a wonderful supplement. Uh, yes, a, yeah. A I'm sorry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I well, think that, you know, <laughs> I'm going to, I have a special gift for you at the end of this discussion. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I got an epiphany at two o'clock my time this morning, 10 o'clock your time. <laughs> and I, I acted on that epiphany and I'm going to share it. I'm going to share it with you at the okay, end. Okay, that sounds discussion. cool. I'm intrigued. Okay, thank you. <laughs> See, you hooked me straight away. Classic storyteller. Yeah. So um, you did something here, which you obviously you were thinking of me because I need a page like this, how to use this book. I mean, how amazing. So rather than me quote from this, why don't we talk, let the author uh, tell us how to use the book. Absolutely. And you know, it sounds funny because you're asking people to, to sort of read, how do I use a book? And you know, everybody knows you open up a book, you start reading it, and you start thinking and actioning, right? But essentially a, a book by its format can be constraining. You know, you think, okay, it's X number of words, X number of pages. I need to start from the beginning and go to the end. And that in itself can be constraining. And the way the book has been written, it's intended to be used in any way you like. You know, you can open up the last chapter, start reading it, go through it, think about it, and use the tools at the end of the chapter to actually work on yourself. And the last chapter is on happiness, by the way. So we can all start with happiness in our lives. Well, what you just said segues into my very next question or a concern absolutely what I was thinking I wanted to do and and the way that I typically read uh, a book like this uh, I get into some of the introductory things but I go right to the index because I then I get an idea of you know what, what is that well what's in the book what's in the book for sure and then I go to the, I've got the master of search engine optimization and keywords, and they're right here in the index. And so I go to the index to see it. I, I was having such a great time going through your index to see what your keywords were. Uh, okay, I, I'll give you a little test. Okay. Out of, and I only got through C in the alphabet. I, I, I was so <laughs> And there's a whole, yes, a whole, a whole lot of other letters as well. I got, I got, <laughs> I got ABC, which is, it's only a couple of pages, but that's all the further I got. Uh, in, in A, the thing that um, the key word is actions. That that was obviously just by the number of, well, actions and, well, no, I take that back. Number one, well, a B keyword was brain. Brain was probably your number one. Well, yes. It's, it's, it's a, a, yeah, brain, without right? a brain, we can't do anything. <laughs> yeah, so we need that. It's key. <laughs> and, 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 and the challenge is <clears throat> that I, I only use half my brain. I've been accused of only using half my brain. And I, I, I did something else for the first time today, Dave, I've never done. I went to your Facebook page. I had never, as long as you and I have known each other, I had never went to your Facebook page today. Now, when I went today, what did I see? I saw a brain. Two, two sides, one gray and one colored. I said, well, he, David knows that. He knows I don't work with half a brain. So that, it, was, it was so beautiful. Uh, thank you, thank you for that. And most of the times I actually feel I'm working with half a brain. I could do with two, two brains. That would be really good. Right. <laughs> we need if to crack that. With half a brain, we're in real danger. <laughs> the, the knowledge that is gonna spew forward if you're only working with half a brain. Oh gosh. Uh, well, that I, I, cognition, big word. Well, those, those are, that's how I read a book regularly. I, I go and It gives you a very happens. good, actually that approach, and a lot of people don't actually get this, but if you do that, it gives you almost a 30,000 view um, perspective of a book. Right? Well, I, I haven't made the, the decision yet, but well, you know, I, I, I have a lot of discussions with Barbara Weltman. And, and she every year publishes a 700 page book and you have to go to her keyword index. Yes. Well, I do, it's about taxes and small business taxes and I don't need 700 pages of that yes. information, all great information. So her index tells me exactly. And that's a great tip you just gave for information retrieval. Well, I'm gonna see how, how, how I feel after I've read your book 
and then I go to the keywords to. Uh, okay. But it's going to take me a, a year or two because right, right after you, you're going to come up with something else, and you're. <laughs> but it's well, all. People tell me I I write faster than they can read. So <laughs> if this possible, if I, this time next year I'll have another book out. We, we don't know yet. And uh, I, I love. I think it's I've read it before, but I uh, I think. You, you you reference yourself as a neuroscientist, which you are. Well, uh, I'm not really. I mean, I'm a chemical you're, engineer. You're not certified, but you certainly are qualified. I suppose, you know, I mean, a lot of research, you know, right now I've got like six years worth of research and writing into that field over two books. So I kind of begin to, to find my way through a very complex landscape. And um, it's really exciting because for the first time ever, we are actually beginning to see ourselves think and what effect that has and and the picture that's emerging is quite frightening really it's a lot of the time for many different evolutionary based reasons our brain is designed to stop us from thinking too much it's there to stop us from analyzing things too deeply and in the long term you know our history that has helped us survive during critical times and you know survive events and here we are but now we're at a complex point in our evolution in our history where we actually need the brain's ability to think, synthesize, connect the dots and come out with inferential things. And we really need that. Biochemically, we're designed to avoid it. It's energetic. It costs us a lot, a lot of energy. The brain doesn't like it. But the moment we understand that constraint, then we can begin to act against it. We can begin to set things in place which allows us to be more thoughtful um think more deeply and and we need that right now god only knows how much brain power we need now to 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 get us through things and and to i mean it's well i know none of us have ever seen a period of time as we are seeing right now in our lifetime it's kind of interesting because my young granddaughters are growing up with that mindset with that attitude. Uh, here I am uh, 70 years older, 65 years older than my grandchildren. And um, uh, I'm, you know, going back and, 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 and seeing where things are. And, and actually, uh, I'm able to contribute to my grandchildren's thinking, which is, which is kind of interesting because we've all gone through 20, we all survived 2020. We all somehow survived 2020. Just, yes. <laughs> and, and, and probably I can say this about myself, and I'm sure you, you will confirm it with yourself. You were probably as productive in 2020 as any year in your life. Well, yes and no. I mean, obviously what is happening in the world, what has happened to this point in time, what we think will happen next is exerting its own influence on us. It's making us anxious, it's making us more thoughtful, it's making us perhaps a little bit more introspective. Um, that affects people in one of two ways. One is that you know you panic, you lose control of yourself and your situation, you self-medicate in whatever way or fashion or form will allow you to cope with this. Or you say, hey, you know, I know it's hard and I know it's difficult and I know it's completely uncertain and there's no set outcome that I can guarantee a hundred percent from where I stand, but I'm not going to just sit back and let things happen. And that tends to make those of us who make that decision a lot more productive, at least on the surface, because we are a lot more active. That's um, one thing I wanted to, it's, it's really hard to, um, you know, to pick out where, where we should go. I, I want to jump in because you also do something with each one of your chapters. Yeah, well, then just open up in, in, in random and let's discuss that. And I would no, actually give us a good, a good litmus test. <laughs> and I have every November, <clears throat> excuse me, every November, I have a discussion with Barbara Wellman about her new book. And this, what you are saying right now, that's what do I say? I just open it up. I see what it has to say. And and uh, we, we, we deal with it. Well, it, here we go. My one of my favorite words, Dave. Oh, well, I wanted to, wanted to point something else out too, because each one of your chapters are one words, one word. And I, uh, I had your chapter listing here somewhere. There it is. Uh, life, identity, goals, motivations, behavior, beliefs, 
values, grit, grit. <laughs> was it a newspaper that was published in Williamsburg, Pennsylvania, and they were only allowed to publish good news. They were not allowed, that, that's all they published was, it was called grit, yeah. I wonder if it's all attitude, mindset, happiness. Um, I happened to open a book up to values and, okay. and that is, you gotta have values. Mm, absolutely, I totally agree with you. And I don't think there's a single person on the planet who would disagree with that. The question which then comes up from that is whose values do you have to have and what values are they? And that, that is a gray area. And you know, we can, we can take this into any domain. You can take in the business domain, you can have capitalists and more socially minded business and they both have values and they both are 100% behind them and they both are convinced that they're right. You can have the political arena, you can have you know, labor and Tories who are conservative, you can have conservatives and who are you know, Republicans and Democrats and they both have values and they're both 100% behind them. So the moment you talk about values, you gotta think, okay, where do they come from? How are they generated? How do we maintain them? How do we actually put them into practice in a way that helps us be better, create, better societies, better communities, better businesses. And, and that question is not as easy to solve as you might think, but there is a way to solve it. There is a way to actually understand where values come from and, and how they generate and how they're accepted. And part of it is cultural. You know, we, <clears throat> within the West, we have certain specific Western values, for instance, which are not um, evident in societies, which are not Western societies. Um, so, you know, some of them come from the behavior which we see in each other and reinforces itself. And some of them come from our own perception of the world and our place in it. And these are our personal set of values. So if, for instance, you know, you have a very egalitarian streak in you, you've helped small businesses for a long time, you understand how businesses work and how the business world works, and you try to enable smaller people, smaller businesses, be better by actually tapping into that knowledge. That's one of your values. And you say, okay, wh who gave you that value? I mean, your parents surely did not set you aside and say, hey, listen, David, this is what you've got to do with your life. Help small businesses become better. This is something you develop and you believe in. And because you believe in that, you do it to a much greater degree and with a lot more effectiveness than somebody who would just do it, let's say, just for money. Well, we I, hire, I, hire somebody to do it. <laughs> I, I have said uh, one of my major, major themes in, in terms of small businesses, and, and and now we're getting a great test of it because uh, you know 2020 put every made everybody quiet, you know business uh, for the most part, and then all of a sudden, for 50 million. They, they say 40 million, but I think it's closer to 50 million businesses attempted to reopen and start, but they were all starting from point zero. They were all coming out of the gate together. So theoretically, the business model could have changed. Uh, the way you deliver, the deliverability. Um, but the, the major thing is people are not going to buy from you unless you bring value to their life, whatever, whatever that might be. And mm. You and, and I value, value and, and you're making a good point here and a, a very important point. And value is not the same as values because you know you can bring out a product which is in, incredibly valuable and that adds value to people's lives, but you could be the worst possible person on the planet. And in, initially, this may work, but at some point, this catches up with you. And I'll, I'll give you an example now uh, an active example Activision Blizzard. They bring out uh, video games and entertainment packages, but they have uh, a growth strategy and a business plan and products are incredibly valuable and they are absolutely solid you know if we do a business projection analysis they're a great company to invest in they have good management structure they have good packages for their employees and they bring out great products which the public loves now for the last um two three or four months i think now they've been embroiled in a lawsuit brought on by some of their employees about sexual harassment at work now, this is values, right? It's nothing to do with the value they produce. But here's the thing. Uh, some of the investment firms which had been recommending Activision Blizzard as a company to invest in have now withdrawn the support. And I think one of them actually published an article saying when good companies do bad things. Now, the good company thing is a reflection on the value of the company and what it does. 
but the bad things they've done is a reflection on their values where they did not uh, actively support or even entertain the notion of personal boundaries and they didn't think that you know creating a culture which allowed people to feel safe in the workplace in terms of who they were sexually was important and actually it is and it's caught up with them so now it's affecting their their, their price share <clears throat> it's affecting their place in the stock market it's affecting the perception that investors have which means that their ability to tap into money has um, decreased because of that so we can see how the value which you bring to the marketplace to other people's lives is predicated upon your own values so this is why values are so important at a personal basis well, if you yeah if you don't hold good values the conflict arises when your your values and my values don't match up that's that, that's probably. well exactly and, and, and this is I'm, I'm very glad you mentioned this because this is exactly the question you know i mean values are such a broad set in general that some we can perhaps overlook and some will overlap and then there are some which are core values you know we both believe for example in the sanctity of life and i don't think you're going to get anybody on any planet hopefully <laughs> when other planets are discovered who will say oh it's okay to kill people you know if you don't like them or if they get in your way we both believe that you know playing by certain rules is something which we value. We both believe that um, having a sort of um, an egalitarian approach, which gives intrinsic value to your employees or intrinsic value to the people around you, even if they're not exactly like you, is something which is um, desirable. So these are the values which are core values, and they emerge across cultures, interestingly enough. And they, they merge also across different individuals with different backgrounds, different upbringings, and different situations. And you've got to say, well, where do the core values come from? And one way of <clears throat> determining how these core values are put together and where they come from is to examine how our brain actually works. And we'll come back to this energetic cost. So essentially, we are all fashioned the same way. We're all built the same way. My brain, your brain, anybody's brain. And the way the brain is fashioned and the way it connects things is designed to lead us to a way that makes life easier. So we don't have to struggle all the time. I mean, the struggle of life is really real, but we don't have to struggle necessarily. Mm -hmm. If I think, for example... That on page 68, I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if, I, if I think, for example, at the moment I turn my back on you, you're going to literally stab me with a knife then yeah, I know, but let's think, let's suppose, right? That actually think that, then I can't relax around you, which affects everything we do, creates friction in everything we do, creates unnecessary obstacles. So we can't really, although we may think it's really good for me and you to work together, it's not really going to work out because I can't relax and you sense that then you put up barriers and so on. And that predicates on that you know, belief of mine that you don't value human life, hence you don't value my life. But if we both believe that we both equally value human life and we, you know, no matter what disagreement we have, we're unlikely to, you know, to try and kill each other, then that changes everything. It makes things a lot easier to deal with. And, and that's how values drive us. And we need to understand that. People often confuse, you know, value and values, belief and values and belief is slightly different things. So there you go. And that, is, that also melds into a discussion about trust, which we're not going to yes. deal with a little bit. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, trust is absolutely necessary. Otherwise, we can have zero contact with any, with any, you know, any other person. I wanted to bring out in your book, and, and, uh, and, and we'll just have you do it live. Well, you have points to remember. Obviously, you just summarized those bullet points. I mean, you, you made it so simple to, to, to read and understand. You definitely were thinking about me on that one. Question time. Um, you ask in this in chapter seven, you ask three questions. What are the universal values you perceive in practice? You've alluded to those. Are you aware of the way context changes your behavior and the values you apply? I think you just said that. Uh, and how do you plan your day so that it fits with the plan you have for your life, which goes in, in, into what is intended to be and then what happens and we have to deal with? Yeah, um, I'm so glad you brought this up now because essentially you're right. Every chapter finishes on a summary, which is a number of points. You do it so well. You 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 bring it home. You you, yeah. you you we ask the questions. Well, how does that particular principle apply in my life? And and you've yes. done it. And, and then and then that that summary is 
uh, finished with three questions in every chapter. And those three questions are basically the kind of questions a friend would ask you in a friendly environment that would help you turn a little bit more introspective about why you are, how you are. And that's the intention of the book at heart, really. It's supposed to be that friend which will say, hey, you are better than you think. You're better than you think you are. And here's a, how you can be better still. This is what you need to think about. This is what you need to ask yourself. Well, you just kind of gave the top tip. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, you did it in different words, but you, you essentially say, I'm going to read it just so, so we can compare. Examine your home and your office. Identify what helps you work and live better and what makes it harder for you. It can be small things, such as a door that it always sticks, that's like my refrigerator, a lock that's hard to use, a light that flickers before it comes on, fix these things to create less friction and make the effort required to get through each day way less. Wow, an effortless day. Wow. That would be amazing, right? Exactly. I mean, you think about it. The last yeah. one? You go, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, well, if you think about it, essentially, here's, here's what it is, right? The world is a construct. That construct has been created by us, people. So in theory, since it's our construct, it should work for us just like that, no effort involved. And, and we know from experience, this is not the case. We know that everything which we do, even simple things, appear to be difficult. They take a lot of effort from us. They require a lot of work. They don't always give us the outcomes they're supposed to, and then we have to work extra hard to get something to work when it should work. And then you have to ask yourself, why? Why does it happen? And here's what I essentially say, that the world we experience is not really the world we have constructed. That world is a construct, sure. It's a construct of our actions, absolutely. But it's a construct that is an emergent construct, an emergent phenomenon, if you like. So basically, it is created by the sum total of the tiny little actions that we do on an everyday basis and their actions around them and the actions around them, which you know every, every sort of layer creates an enabling effect, which simply either supports or amplifies what we do at the base level. So when we, you and I, step out into the world and we try to do something, yeah, be it, you know, perhaps find a car that is not too expensive, find a home that is suitable for us, but it's not going to cost us more money than we have, that generates friction. You think, well, why? Why does it generate this friction? Why is the friction there? Well, the friction is there because the system isn't really designed for us, and we try to fit into it the way that we think we want to fit into it, not the way it thinks we need to fit into it. And that's what generates our friction. So if we find ways to get rid of our friction, lubricate it somehow, then life becomes easier. If it becomes easier, we become more productive. If we become more productive, we become more agreeable, better. Do we do things in a better way? We have time and energy to think. When, so all you know, desirable things. When we, actually, when we exercise, we know that we have to have resistance. Because yes, we, yeah, exactly, we yes. We don't have resistance, it doesn't work. However, when we bring resistance into our lives, I, I always try to look for options. I, I want to get a list of my options, and then I, I will inevitably pick the one of least resistance. It's just, it's the way it is. Yes, what, but we see, here's the thing. I mean, and this is commendable what you said, right? But we are actually designed evolutionary to behave and operate in a way that actually looks for the path of least resistance. You know, left to our own devices entirely, we may all choose to do the easiest thing possible, which means that nothing would really get done to a very uh, sort of agreeable extent. It takes effort for us to realize that, hey, we need to do things differently. And when do we do that? Well, we don't do it when we should, because if we did things when we should, we shouldn't be having this conversation about climate change and CO2 levels today, because we were warned 25 years ago. So really, that's when we should have done something and we didn't. We come to today, we see these superstorms hitting the eastern coast of the United States. We see the temperatures rising across the globe everywhere. We see the global economy being threatened because communities having, uh, are being displaced by uh, climatic phenomena. We see that food production is threatened. We see all these things. And that now generates greater friction, which we need to solve. So now we're trying to do the things which we were supposed to do. So now we try to do the harder things, which we should have done 25 years ago. Now, because the things ahead of us 
are even harder if we don't do anything. So now that we kind of we have two comparison points, we can actually begin to to take the again the path of least resistance, but it's greater effort than before. And and, and the reason, David, uh, bottom line reason that, that I'm having so much fun, and I'm talking about the business side of things of, of what I'm doing, I'm picking best practices of 50 years, and just because the only thing that has changed in 50 years is the technology. Yes, and yes, the, I agree. The, uh, the only the, thing that's changed in the last 5,000 years is the technology. Correct. Human, human beings are the same. We have the same needs. Mm -hmm. We arguably have the exact same behavior. And we certainly have the same way of thinking on how to interface with each other and the world at large. We govern by the same sort of a dynamic shape by thousands of years of evolution. You know, the mechanics of our brain hasn't changed. Technology, however, as a layer, does what technology as a layer has always done. It amplifies our ability to do things better in a more efficient way with a greater sense of economy of, of effort. Classic case, this conversation we're having now, you know, if we take this conversation 30 years ago and we have the exact same conversation in the exact same context, 30 years ago, we wouldn't have the technology to do this now. What would need to happen? You'd need to pick up a phone, a telephone, Right, not a cell phone. Find the area code for my area. So we have to ring the exchange and say, you know, where you know David lives in Greece. What's the area code for his area? Use my number. Connect with me. So you have to call a house, hoping that I'm there when you want to talk to me. And when you actually get hold of me, you gotta say, hey, listen, can we get together for half an hour? You know, you need to arrange a flight. You need to come to my place. I need to come to your place. I mean, huge amounts of friction, cost, and effort, right, to do this. And now because we do this, it becomes easier which means the exchange of information we enter into becomes easier, Our ability to think smarter becomes easier because we don't just think with our own brain. That's really ridiculously inadequate. Well, we uh, think with, it, with each the, other's brains. Technology brings another dynamic to play, a simple dynamic, but, but in terms of human beings, it, you, you start to, to build around it. Um, and I, I mentioned this to, to Scott earlier today, the Scott's in Seattle, I'm in the Midwest, Cincinnati, Ohio. You, what city in Greece do you live in? Not Athens. Uh, I live, no, no, I live outside Athens, a city called Pat Patras. Okay, so here we are, um, millions of miles apart, three different time zones, yet we, we have gathered in, in a technology to, to, to bring a message, to share a message. Yeah, I mean, and technology makes, makes you know, borders, it's, it's, it's border agnostic. It's... Border connection. agnostic. I can I quote you on that? <laughs> Absolutely, you can. Yes, and and it, it allows us to connect irrespective of the time. It allows us to co to connect at a very low cost, and that enables us to do these things. Which means that you know, essentially, through the connection, I get smarter because I listen to you. I tap into your knowledge. You get smarter from me, and whoever listens to both you and I becomes even smarter because he's listening to two people instead of one, and they go away much more enriched. This David is beautiful. one plus David two equals what? <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes half a David, I think, but <laughs> well, let's hope it's more than one. <laughs> well, and, 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 and we know for a fact that you bring that, that average up. So I, I, mean, I, I, I try, uh, you know, but you know, here's the thing locked inside their own head. Everything is perfect. Everything is really smart because you really? know we're the judge. Everything we, is perfect inside. Well, yeah, because you know, if we're the judges of our own ability to think things up, well, you know, we can't be objective. So, you know, it's our own idea. We get excited. If we get excited energetically, our brain gives us a dopamine spike. So we feel happy about it. And we think, oh, this is wow, this is amazing. When we bring it out, however, and we discuss it as we do now, that's when we actually see the value of it. You may help me, for instance, to see the value of my thought because it really fires you up and you give me something else back. So my thought becomes a springboard for your thought, which then enables me to think even better. We may, you may say, hey, David, this is, this is, you know, rubbish you came out with. I'm going to think, okay, why? Why is it rubbish? But then discussing it, we begin to see the value of a different perspective. And that enriches both of us. So, you know, this connection is fantastic. It allows us to become so much better and so much deeper in our thinking that, you know, without it, we'd be lost. Wow, and uh, go back, go go back since the beginning of time. 
Uh, we've got to be able to communicate with one another. If we can't communicate the message, however, however it might be through, through the written word, through the video, uh, however it might be, uh, oh, podcast, someone suggest, su suggested I do a podcast. Do you do a podcast? I do sometimes, occasionally. I'm not as regular as I should be because- The reason I, 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 I kind of laugh when I hear that question, when somebody says, well, David, why aren't you podcast, David and me, why aren't you podcasting? And I said, I, I don't have time to do something. I want to, what I am doing right now, I want to do the, the best I possibly can. Mm -hmm. I don't want to. So I said, well, here's, I think, yeah, here's, one, here's my recommendation. Get to one of my videos, close your eyes, and there's your podcast, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. See, that's simple and beautiful. It actually works. And I think also, you know, you said something really important. You said you don't have a lot of time, which is, um, you know, it's, it's true. Same 24 of, hours do you have, though. Well, no, well, well, none of us have enough time to do what we want. So then we have to prioritize. And when we create those priorities for ourselves, inevitably, our own values begin to surface. Our own sense of who we are begins to come in. So, you know, if you say, well, you know, how do you prioritize? Well, he said, you know, I work on videos and I work perhaps on, on text sometimes. And that's what I do because that's really important. And you're going to say, well, why is it important? It's been important because your message actually matters. Businesses need that advice. And if you have to have a podcast because, well, you know, you may think, well, isn't that a cool thing to do? Well, that takes you away from that. So then, you know, it means that it's not as important to you. And other things become important, like having three channels instead of two, for instance. So you, you see how- You brought up a sore point. I've got, I've got three YouTube channels. One, I don't know how I got there. And I, I would like to get, I would like to only have one, but the one that I have, interesting. I don't publish publicly on that one. All I use that one for is to go into the studio to record. That's right. Well, think. there you go. See, but all these things, you know, the way we prioritize always is is basically indicative of what we value and what we value ourselves, what we actually put in uh, first, second, third, determines then the order of in which we throw our energy behind the things we do. Okay, David, uh, you and I could, well, this isn't going to be the last time we talk. No, it's not. I'm sure about that. Yes, we, absolutely. We, we, we go on. Uh, we do some good brainstorming, I think. I think we do some really good brainstorming. There's good complementarity, I must say. Um, my, my special gift to you, and I, I, I'm saying this with all sincerity, I, I mentioned that you are a master of, 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 of putting the ideas on paper so that somebody reads them. Um, I, I, I enjoy doing videos. That's how I want to communicate the message. Uh, in the last, uh, well, at the beginning of 2020, I started developing uh, a concept for myself, uh, and it's worked extremely well for me. And so I want to take it to its next step, and that is to show other people how to do what I'm doing, which is simple. You can do it, and it's working for me. Why shouldn't it work for you? Okay. Um, I uh, have developed uh, what I call web landing pages. You know that because I think you're you're probably on every web landing page I have. <laughs> I, I would venture, well, you're on, if you're pretty close on all of them, but I wanna create a special page. So at two o'clock this morning, uh, I got an epiphany and I woke up and I went to GoDaddy and I bought intentional.com. Can you believe I bought intentional.com? And you know what I paid for it? Wait till David hears I paid a dollar ninety nine for it. Oh wow, that is really, <laughs> that is really, really, well, really cool. I, I bought it really, David, to protect you because I don't want someone to take my idea and work it against you. So you now have control. We have co-control of a domain called intentional.com. That's amazing, actually. It, it really <laughs> is. It really it because. Is, yeah. Uh, the one word dot coms, you know, that's been the explosion. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So on that page, I've already envisioned, I'm going to, I'm going to do all the work to produce the page. All you have to do, all I'm going to ask you to do, you don't have to do it if you don't want. All okay, I'm going to ask you to do is to give me the links to two five minute videos a week. Okay. I can do okay. that. Yeah, one yeah, video absolutely. will be specifically, uh, 
intentional. Yeah. As, as, yeah. as you're doing on LinkedIn. So yeah. you can even take, you know, you can double, double use it, take your best LinkedIn and, and do it. And, and we'll put it on this, on this landing, okay. web landing page. Okay. Um, and the other thing, um, I would like you to do a five minute eye of your mind uh, okay. video. Yeah. And, and you send me the links and boom, that you're done. I will not publish anything without your, 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 your approval, but it's going to be very simple, very, very simple. Um, uh, we will direct folks to uh, where they can buy your books. Any videos that you have done that you want published to direct people to, we will put it on that page. So we'll, we'll work it out, but it's just going to be a pure information. Uh, and and I, I'm out. Um, I'm out right now telling the rest rest of the, of the world how I think they should be using a page like this. So it's my honor that you are my very first person. Thank you very much for thinking of it. Actually, I'm touched. I really well, am. it's you're you're perfect for it. You're absolutely perfect for it. Uh, and and that actually the lead video uh, will be the one that we are doing right now. Um, okay. We can change it. If we want to change it, we can no, change. No, this is good. This is actually cool. It's, it's, it's been a cool discussion. I've, I've been on well, it. it, it I, I've enjoyed, as always, it, there's no way I can't have an hour with David Amerlin looking at the eye of his mind, <laughs> trying to figure out how things work. But uh, it, it's just, it's wonderful uh, where you are right now in your writing because I, I am plugging into everything. And and it's really neat. And thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Thank you.